recording this book. Mm -hmm. going live going live going live i'm being live streamed except for some reason my phone is still trying to play me music why is that i wish for that not to be the case thank you hello facebook also called book of face one moment because i think i'm all i got it and then like My phone is making weird noise. All right, we'll just do it this way this morning. Hi, okay. Um, a couple days ago, I did a, a video on shifting conceptually from this idea of um, regulating emotions to emotional alchemy and how the um, semantics that I instruct, which are rooted in practices that predate acupuncture, how these practices are so beautifully aligned um, with polyvagal theory, which is a very um, commonly used framework to discuss um, what trauma is and how we heal from it. Uh, there we go. And um, what I'd like to do today is just tell you a little bit about what it looks like using pictures. So um, this is a fantastic little flip chart here uh, that Deb Dana put together. She has cards. They're not like divination cards, but it, they're real cute cards. She's written a bunch, very, very handy. We're gonna look at one specific, two, actually two things. So we're gonna look at this. I think you can see it. Did I set this up correct? So, kind of get it. All right. So, what you're looking at here is the vagus nerve. And uh, vagus means wandering in Latin. It's a very long, long, long nerve. It, as I said, it innervates all of your major organs. So, if you look at this sort of dismembered body here, you can see it goes through your brain, your heart, your liver, your stomach, your kidneys, your spleen, um, your um, gut, your colon. And what Porges does in his work is he says that we've got a ventral vagal system, which is this upper part, and a dorsal vagal system, which is this lower part. If you know me and you saw me around 2019 when I was paralyzed from the waist down, I was in a state called dorsal collapse. Justin and Don tormented me so brilliantly, I became paralyzed from that trauma. So here is what Deb Dana has to say about the vagus nerve. Vagus is the main component in the parasympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic meaning all the stuff your body does that you don't need to ask it to do. And in daily function, it creates something that's called homeostasis, which is balance. We like balance. It's just like Goldilocks means that we're, we're cruising along. Things are going great. If we move into a survival response or a trauma response, the vagus nerve can move um, the body into conservation by slowing the heart rate, impacting digestion, all the things that happen during a stress response. Excuse me, it is tea time. This sympathetic nervous system here that you can see, which is illustrated with the skeleton is a, um, a system that happens in your spine. So that's your central nervous system, sympathetic, central, parasympathetic, all over the place. When it gets triggered, when we're triggered, your hypothalamus uh, moves into a survival response 
it's called the HPA axis, hypothalamus, pituitary, and adrenal glands. Um, all of these somatic tools, the somatic function, the somatic practices, as we're doing the, not only just following the path of the vagus nerve with attention and intention with good feelings and smiles, but we're also going into the glands. So um, especially in the brain, the, the center in the system I'm in is the crystal palace, and it's in the middle of the brain, hypothalamus, pituitary, all of that. And you smile to your brain, your literal, actual brain. Could also relate to this as third eye and crown chakras. Um, if that is a system that is more familiar with you, uh, though it is different than the one that I am discussing today. And then when you're, when you're in a state of trauma, when trauma happens, and trauma is what happens when your body mind cannot handle whatever's going on. Trauma is not what happens when something happens to you and I go, that, that's, that's, I'm sorry, that wasn't a big enough deal. You're not really traumatized. You're just overreacting. That is not how trauma works. We do not choose to have trauma responses. We don't. They are automatic, right? Because they're from the autonomic nervous system. Same nervous system that digests food and pushes it through your gut and makes your blood circulate and, you know, respiration, perspiration, excretion, secretion, digestion, reproduction, all the essential life functions, if you remember biology from sixth grade, which apparently I do, but don't ask me what I had for lunch yesterday. So when trauma happens, this I think you are going to be able to see pretty easily. I can just like kind of put this up here. When trauma happens, all kinds of shit occurs. So the trauma can impact us by what is happening, um, but it can also happen through neglect, right? So if you've ever heard of adverse childhood experiences, there was a study done in the 90s, I believe, um, on like mostly middle class kids looking at events that can occur in childhood that the higher your score, the more likely you are to experience things like autoimmune disease, um, addiction to substances, challenging behaviors, ACE adverse childhood experiences. And some of that happens because of neglect. And the neglect doesn't have to be so bad that CPS is called. The neglect can be, like I'm sure my brother and I experienced neglect even though we were never neglected because our parents were also caregiving for other children in front of us the whole time we were growing up. And they weren't available at that time. They were teaching out of the house. There's no malice there. There's no violence there. There's nothing there, but we may have experienced that as neglect. We might have, I don't know. I don't remember. I was a kid. When we're doing trauma work, when we're healing from trauma, and I keep saying healing happens here and now, one of the things we're doing is helping the vagus nerve be at peace, be a little bit more toned, you'll hear that, or um, activating your vagus nerve. There's all kinds of fun stuff going on right now. And I'm here to tell you, uh, there's no one exercise. There's no one month program. There's no formula for success as it relates to trauma. If you are taking an evidence-based approach, to resolving trauma, if, if what you're doing is rooted in the science. It's not a switch. It's just not. And there's a lot, a lot of marketing right now, marketing around this concept that, you know, all you have to do is buy my program, do this thing. In a month, you'll feel better. You know, give me all the reasons that are, what is all your pain so you can join my program and then 
you know, a year you're going to be ahead and it totally like, whoa, wow. No, no, no. Mm -mm. The more complex the trauma. Mm -mm. And a lot of the um, trauma folk I know right now, um, and I'm increasingly considering myself part of that group. It's, it's a strange thing, but um, consistently accurate is that almost all trauma at this point, I, I'm looking at it and treating it in myself and approaching it with other people as complex trauma. It's all complex. Complex trauma t currently is defined as trauma that is ongoing. And then you'll hear things like war, abuse. Uh, but hello. Treatment for cancer. You know, um, being bullied as a kid can show up later through all of the patterning that happens in the body mind as complex trauma. And complex trauma is strange, man. It does weird things. It can come with dissociation, with being disconnected, body and mind. Um, it could show up as like actual literal dissociation from half your body. I was dissociated from my lower half for actually all told four years. Um, the final integration just happened a couple weeks ago. The final full integration of psyche to self for me. Four years it took me to resolve that. Certainly disrupted by experiencing cancer during the height of the pandemic, obviously, but it takes time. And the, the earlier the experience of trauma, right? Think about adverse childhood experiences. The earlier that is, the more encoded a lot of this is into the body mind. And with girl children, especially, female bodied individuals, we often get labeled as borderline. I'm not sure I was ever labeled as borderline, um, but I'm, somebody probably could have at some point in my life if they wanted to. Or dysregulated, right? They're so dysregulated, I hate that word. Can I tell you why I hate dysregulated? My therapist thinks I'm silly, but that's okay. She's she's. She's getting around to, to the awesomeness of my silliness. What do we regulate? What is regulated in the world? Companies, emissions, when you go to get your car inspected, that's through a regulatory process. Um, SEC, <laughs> right? Like, even just setting up DNO insurance for an organization, all of that is regulated. And then, and then, and that is science talk. That is the science talk that feeds into the evidence based, everything that goes into psychology and um, all of these licensed entities that are assisting with the healing of trauma. But human beings were not regulated. In fact, when we are regulated, bad shit happens, doesn't it? That some girl in Michigan um, is going to jail for 90 days for self-managing an abortion because it was against regulations. This Taoist system I'm in uses the word alchemy. And beyond my love of all things esoteric and the more esoteric, the happier I am, alchemy as it's presented in this framework is something that one is actively engaged in. It's not something that we're passively experiencing or receiving. So it also creates a kind of um, learned sovereignty and learned agency in the practitioner to be able to recognize a state. And then the psychology term would be to resource one in and through it. So I will be calling it emotional alchemy and not emotional regulation. 
just as the vagus nerve goes through all of these organs, if I go back to Deb Dana's nice, beautiful parasympathetic image here, just as the vagus nerve innervates all of this, so do these foundational somatic practices address and key into all of this. The gut from a, um, from a metaphor perspective becomes the hara or the lower dantian, this lower energy center, seat of life force energy. This is where we get energy from the earth. This is the energy that we're born with. This is the energy with our reproductive organs that people who have penises are taught to conserve. Sperm is seen as um, a loss of jing. Orgasm, sperm. So you learn how to, how to separate orgasm from ejaculation. Female bodied individuals, folks with ovaries, we can just do whatever, however long. Mm -hmm. In fact, we are encouraged to experience pleasure often and to great extent, as much as we desire and as much as it helps us stay balanced because we're already born with all of the eggs that we're ever going to lay. <laughs> That's a really weird word, but we are, we're already born with it. Uh, and they figured this out, these Taoists, so long ago, they figured all of this out. And then here Stephen Poor just comes, 20, 30 years ago, and it's like, hey, polyvagal theory. I think that's really cool. Uh, so I just pulled out one of Mantak Chia's books. I, I don't honestly go into this very often, but let's just see. He's my teacher. Um, and this is, a, um, this is an advanced um, series sequence of practices that takes all of the emotions, the organs that they're associated with and how they exit the body, eyes, ears, nose, mouth. And you use the elements and it's just so cool, right? Again, because it's alchemical and Katie likes the um, esoteric, but listen to what he says, because it's actually pretty practical. In the basic practice, you work with the five elemental forces in humans, wood, water, metal, um, earth, fire, liver, kidney, wood, water, what did I say? Metal, lung, um, spleen, heart. That's not the order you do it in, but that, that was the order that I set it in. So, so what you do is you're using the literal physical actualness of the body to start to relate to the metaphors of this elemental system. And this elemental system is the same elemental system of Chinese medicine. It is the same. Same. This elemental system is the same elemental system of your meridians, absolutely the same. For many people, meridians, which are the energy pathways of Chinese medicine are way too um, subtle and too abstract to relate to, especially folks who live in neurodivergent body minds, especially folks who are traumatized. But isn't it great that all of these meridian channels also happen to almost perfectly follow the big major fascia tracks in the body. So we can, we, me, can provide a literal map for these metaphoric concepts, all of which are aimed at getting our parasympathetic nervous system closer to homeostasis, or the Buddhists would call it equanimity, or um, we call it Tao. It's, it's, it's moving into balance. It is looking for and seeking balance. And it says that no emotion is right or wrong. Love and hate are ne neither is better or worse, but how am I being affected by it? How is it affecting others? 
so we do this um, relationship with these five elemental forces. So let's see, um, let me see if I can just give you a quick one. This is, um, so this inner smile I introduced the other day where you just close your eyes and smile. Uh, you might first, I, I always offer it um, when I'm instructing and it'll be like, it can be as simple as I smiled to my breast cancer site the whole time, the whole time. Every time I went into a doctor's office, the whole time during radiation, um, probably not the whole time during chemo, that was just fucking exhausting. But if I could remember, I was smiling and it's just sending positive regard. That's what the humanistic psychologists call positive regard. Not like, yay, cancer, but like pleasant, kindness. This is why I didn't go to war. My body was already trying to end my life. Why would I try to end it? life like no that did not work for me but when we start working with more um, specifics into the organs which is literal and then the conceptual idea of these elements we're just going to be a lot more specific you see that literally smiling to your organs sending your own good intent to your literal body, activating what Stephen Porges calls the social engagement network and turning it inward. Uh, this is so active, obviously. This, this seated, so like if you see somebody doing this meditation, we're gonna be seated and largely still, and it gives the appearance of one of those, like a Zen almost where you're, emptying one of the empty this is not an emptying practice this is a full active uh, dynamic practice <clears throat> thank goodness transcendental meditation entered the chat because i will tell you with with great honesty this <laughs> was not enough for me in resolving the medical trauma of cancer because my body was still carrying so much anxiety and I knew that I needed something that was more passive and something that would be um, truly inviting actual space. But then I have all the things. I'm not gonna sit still. I suck at paying attention. I'm not going to be uncomfortable to do your meditation, nice people. No, I don't care if it's the right way to hold my, why? Do you ever hear people talk about seated meditation and then somebody says something like, you know, oh, it hurts so much. And they go, yeah, because it's hard. What? And I'm resolving trauma? Mm -mm. No. I like transcendental meditation. I met Marty, my, my instructor, and I was like, don't make me sit still. He's like, I'm never, I'm, I'm like, because I can't. And I'm going to fidget and I'm going to look at my, he's like, do all of it. I'm like, thank you. It's incredible. It's been amazing for me. You have to go to a teacher to do it though. You can't just like make it up on your own. Um, so the, um, this idea of transforming emotions of being able to, to engage in this alchemical process, which is tuning into your body, the breath, they're called healing sounds. This is actually part of the sound healing um, practice that I offer when I'm doing sound healing work is healing sounds for the organs. So here now I've got maybe somebody who is having a really challenging time with interoception, which is that fancy word for understanding what's happening from the inside out having a really difficult time with that, not understanding what are these people asking me in my emotions? And I can truthfully say, here's a model. It may end up that you don't experience anger in your liver, but it's a literal map. What if we start there? And by paying attention with positive regard, 
conceptually inviting in something that's affirming like forgiveness and just letting go of something that might be challenging like anger, which are the two emotions associated with the liver. This is the wood element. We can get all fancy about it, but then you breathe. And the breath is a focused exhale. And I have never yet seen this breath work activate a nervous system the way other breath work does. I've never seen, it could happen, but I have not yet seen somebody who is living in a neurodivergent body mind, living in a traumatized body mind, engage with this breath work and experience more anxiety. Not yet. There's no counting. Like, like this whole thing, like box breath. Hold. Hold. That looks pretty regulated to me. I got a whole, like I got to count too. What if I'm just, and then shh. already that's going to regulate it's going to just make the breath a little bit more balanced a little bit better and again it we go to the major organs which is also where the vagus nerve innervates everything and then we've got three main energy centers middle of the brain that's where all the glands are all the glands that people talk about in polyvagal theory we go to the gut enteric brain, if you've ever heard of the enteric brain, where the vagus nerve um, innervates the gut so much, and there's the story about all of the serotonin in the body being created in the gut, I have yet to find evidence. I don't look too difficult, but sometimes I look for, like, is that the same serotonin? Like, does it, what does it do with the blood-brain barrier? Am I really getting it? I don't know. But with um, autism with other forms of neurodivergence, especially if you're hypermobile, um, our guts are weird. We got weird guts. We got digestion stuff happening and I'm one of us. So this lower energy center as a metaphor is the Hara. Its literal location is the viscera of your gut. And so we're smiling to the viscera of the gut. We are saying to the gut, I send you positive regard. There's a whole bodywork um, format called Chine Tsung that takes the Bagua. Uh, do I have a picture of the Bagua here? You've seen it. It's the eight sided. I invoked a shape without having a, an example. Uh, well, this, this is a Bagua. Um, this is, that's the shape of a bagua. Chine Tsang places the bagua um, over the, the um, uh, belly button and you massage through the bagua. It's really weird, but it's kind of cool, but it's like really weird. You know, it's all so literal. And the texts though, there's flipping, they're poetic and um, not literal at all. I love it. Okay. I'm going to go make it so that I have groceries in the house. And then um, I'm going over to Hope's to do laundry because she said that I could. Oh, I'll see you later. Bye.